Hi guys, and welcome back to the uh, Store Hero podcast. Um, this week we're joined by uh, Ashton Brown, co-founder of Glitch Ads. Ashton, welcome to the show. It's great to be here, finally, after all the chats we're having about it. Um, <laughs> so, so will I, do you want me to give a little intro um, right now? Yeah, all right. I suppose, yeah, that's typically kind of how we start things off uh, here. We'd love to kind of hear a little bit more about what you, what you do, and what you're working on at the moment. So I'm Ash, the, as you said, the co-founder and CEO of Glitch, which is a very early stage startup. Um, it was founded or incubated in the Founders Program, which we can go into in a little bit more detail um, later on. But um, uh, essentially, I'm building it alongside my co-founder, who's an ex-Google uh, Ads uh, lead engineer. And we essentially are making it super simple for so SMEs in, in particular. So businesses kind of have an ad spend of less than... 100k a month and um, make it super simple for them to optimize their budgets and acquire customers through online ad platforms so initially we're starting with solving for google but the idea is and that's the mvp which we have live which is working we have like about 60 people using it now which is great um wow. and reason, yeah which is you know we we launched the mvp in january you know as all mvps are it's a bit shite so we got people to <laughs> feedback in the ui and so over like the last three weeks, people have actually been actively putting ads through it. And the idea is to uh, just to onboard users for that. We're raising a bit of capital to help us grow um, the team and expand across multiple platforms. So right now we're actually focused on B2B businesses because, you know, my background is e-commerce. Well, I spent two years working in e-commerce and Wayflower. Um, and I know how how uh, overserved the market is with technology when it comes to trying to enable e-commerce founders to you know manage their marketing spend and the data around and like you guys are obviously doing a great job doing that um however what i figured out when we started talking to lots of people in in september when we started looking into this problem that b2b businesses really rely on the intent marketing in particular um but there's like a lot of a lot of these businesses um, and this could be like your guy who's, I don't know, selling. We have a guy who's using it, who's closes businesses down. Um, and he, like, he generates all his business through Google Ads. Um, and if it does, is down. Yeah, he's a liquidation service. So his his high his highest, uh, I think his most popular, his most popular uh, um time of business is like October, November, like just before the, the tax year ends. Um, so he's an interesting character, but he, he has a really good business and it's all driven through Google ads, but he, he came to us and he was like, lads, I, I can't, I, I can't cope with agencies or consultants. Like they're not really offering that much, like they're not really benefiting what I'm doing. And that's really because his budgets are quite low, but he still needs to, he still needs to advertise and he didn't have the expertise. So he's been using the platform and he's been doing really well off the back of it. And we started with that kind of business, like your sole trader who relies on intent marketing. And now we've started to work with more of like B2B SaaS companies like the likes of Wayfair. Um, another one in the UK is Shop Circle, which I'm sure a lot of your um, your users would know. And those guys are obviously they've raised a lot of money. Um, they need to advert like they do multiple different ways of getting in front of people like outbound sales. Marketing is really important to them. And a lot of their internal, like they want to keep things in-house, but a lot of their um, a lot of their teams um, don't have the expertise to kind of run these these ads, like effective ads. So, yeah, so that's what, what, what we've been doing. And the idea is to get to a point where we someone comes onto the platform, you throw in your URL, the AI builds out your campaigns, you tell, it tells you how much budget you should use, and it starts to deploy it across all the different wow. the platforms. Um, and it learns and iterates based on how well it's performing. So the idea is like the user will get to a place where they'll be able to essentially um, just just like let the system work its magic and start spending um, it's like optimizing your budgets to most impactful platforms. Um, I think that like the su super powerful. There's a real need for it, um, but getting okay. there is like yeah, we need a team to do that basically. <clears throat> Class. And 
that's so interesting. You're almost putting your, your marketing on autopilot to a certain extent. And it's obviously the devil is in the detail, but it sounds, sounds amazing. Just yeah. touching on e-commerce, I suppose, in general. Um, I know you worked at Wayflyer. Had you any e-commerce experience prior to Wayflyer or what was your background like there? No. So I've always worked in like early stage kind of scale up tech companies, um, startups, really. I started, I first started off my career in the Red Cross trying to save the world. Um, like very swiftly after a year and a half left that because I was like, Jesus Christ, this is not what I expected it to be. And I was living in London at the time and crowdfunding was massive. Um, I think uh, AB and Bev or like Crowdcube just had their biggest exit from their first exit and AB and Bev bought Camden Hells and everyone was like, Jesus, let's invest in like uh, crowdfunding. And so I was really interested in that space, ended up getting a job in a a company that was comparing uh, different crowdfunding opportunities. It was an aggregation site. And I came in like really early on, maybe the employee number three or four. We grew the team to 12. We pivoted about 15 times. We were on, <laughs> we were on our last legs. Actually, I think Peter Thiel at one point was going to invest in it. And oh. she obviously, yeah, it was mad. Um, the founder, Lex, is an absolute legend and he's a serial entrepreneur and like I've never seen, he's a great fundraiser. Um, but we decided in a, probably the October of 2018, or was it, yeah, it was 2018 to, to be like, this is not a business now. Um, and then I found myself working, and my husband, well, my partner at the time, he's Welsh, he dragged me to Wales. I ended up getting a job with the Welsh government and kind of like, it's almost like an EI similar kind of setup. We had an accelerator for, um, and they were basically helping businesses scale. FinTech was massive. This is like mm. 2018. And it was, I was working with a lot with FinTech businesses and I met Delio, which is um, one of Wales' kind of most prolific FinTech companies or early stage kind of FinTech companies. And they are basically, they create underlying technologies for private banks to uh, uh, showcase their portfolios to their investors. So like digitalizing that whole process. And I came in kind of running strategic partnerships. So looking at how to partner or how to acquire business through partnerships. And that's kind of where I really started looking. It was all partnerships, what I was focused on. Um, and I built like some really cool partnerships with Barclays Private Bank um, in particular. Um, we created like the first closed impact investment ecosystem, um, brought on like some amazing impact funds, raised or like provide, like, de like deployed a lot of funding to some really good businesses. COVID now happened. Now it's and no, so there, it was a, so it was a global, it was a global okay, platform. Okay. Yeah. So Barclays at the time, they were trying to, um, they were trying to acquire new clients um, basically lo loads of these new founders that had just exited and a lot of them were interested in impact investing, but Barclays portfolio was, they didn't really have very many impact um, uh, investments at the time. And Delio um, was providing that underlying technology to Barclays private bank. And they were like, Hey yeah. guys, you want to come together and could we create this marketplace and you guys can, we can invite, you know, impact funds, um, family offices, corporate finance houses, anyone who had good impact deals onto the platform. And then they could basically go out to their clients and be like, hey guys, we have this like, new unique offering um, where you'll be able to access all these amazing impact uh, investments. And it was really effective and it's still going. It's like out in its own now. Um, Dave, one of the co-founders of Delio is kind of running it. Um, but I, um, and we, we launched it basically the first week of COVID. It was meant to be in um, their offices. We we're meant to do this big launch in their offices in Canary Wharf. And we actually had to move it all online, like a webinar. And I think we got like, f like over 500 people signed up to the webinar, 500 people. Like we had a, a really high <laughs> attendance rate. And it, like COVID was the best thing for that because everyone went online. So people started investing on it and it was really, really, it was actually really effective. Um, but I was just hated Wales. It's no offense to any Welsh people, but like <laughs> not for me. And I was like, Tom, get me out of this place, please. I need to go home. So we moved back to Dublin and I got a job initially with them, um, this company called Broadrich, which is like a Fortune 500, I think it is Fortune 500, but massive listed fintech company. 
I knew I, I went in and like a delivery, like a consult, like a product consulting role where I was um, working with them at tier one banks to implement like lending systems. It was the most fucking boring job I have ever had. And I only did it because I was like, this is safe. I might leave the startup world. This is a safe job. And, and when, then, when is this though? It's like during COVID. Yeah, so this is like twenty twenty, like December twenty twenty. I started working okay. there, okay. and uh, I only stayed there for like nine months because I got because I saw wave. I was like, I saw Wayflower was cropping up. Jack's head had just started cropping up on on LinkedIn. I was like, geez, this is very interesting. And the guy I knew, who's the actually the head of sales, Connor Sullivan, um, uh, I I reached out to Sully and I was like this is very interesting like what's going on here and he had just left um his I think he was at Cargur or some I think that's where he was and he had just left to start the, the kind of head of sales role um so he reached out to him and I think actually Sully never actually introduced me to anyone at Wayflower it was uh my other friend uh um uh, Mark Hughes uh, who introduced me to Steve who ended up being my boss at Wayflower Steve Cooney and um I got the job as I came in as like kind of running you. I don't know. It was, it was vague, you know, like all startups. I kind of, it was in partnerships and it was trying to fix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a partnerships role. So going back to like what I was doing at Delio, like trying to figure out ways of like collaborating with them, with bigger, like large, large enterprises to, to scale and get in front of as many e-commerce brands as possible. So we had one with eBay, Adobe, um, Sezzle, which one was actually the most effective one, which is the buy now, pay later in the US. So we created Sezzle Capital with them. Um, and yeah, there was lots of ones that we we're like uh, kind of working on. But it, it was interesting, like the most effective one was like the smaller businesses. Like we started working with VCs, PE firms. Um, we were like people that were really like close like working really closely with the brands they were the most effective ones um Class. i mean it's such a such an amazing irish e-commerce success story really like i can even remember my, my own experience like working at shopify and all of a sudden around 2020 late 2020 early 2021 maybe just multiple different brands having this new little app on their in the shopify app system called wayflyer and i remember looking into like what what is this it's cropping up everywhere then I realized it's an Irish company. And the more you kind of dug into it, I was like, wow, I wasn't even aware, obviously very early on, that this was a thing. And then it was an Irish company as well. And it really just went from strength to strength so quickly. Um, yeah. Like, how early were you there? And what was like the, the growth trajectory like when you were there? As you kind of said, yeah. like kind of coming into an earlier stage startup, you're wearing multiple hats. But I'm sure like every startup, it's a lot of chaos, a lot of organized chaos to a certain extent. But it must yeah. have been really fun. I suppose to class. be a part of a company that was growing that quickly at a cool time. Yeah, it was like, I don't think I'll ever experience anything like it, it was like the state. It was just class. So it came in in August. We had just, I think the May before we just closed the Series A 70 mil, which is huge, free, huge funding. Was it even? Yeah, it was Series A. And I, so the, with that money, the idea was to expand across Europe. So Wayflower predominantly is the biggest market that they, they tapped into at the start was the US because it is, uh, you know, well, like it's the most, um, it's like, yeah, they've just done e-commerce really well and they were kind of first to market with e-commerce. And uh, the idea was with the funding that we would expand into different European markets. Um, and I came in, yeah, in October, or sorry, August. And uh, the October was the first, first month, month that we did a hundred million was a hundred million in in um funding and i remember we all it was the end of month obviously it was like big session every every 30 31st um and that one was we were all in uh, uh 37 or that used to be a haunt of ours and uh the american team we i think we left work at like way by six or seven to go out um and the american team and maybe we're at like 80 80 million and the american team had closed it it was about 12 o'clock at night and it just like lifted it went everyone just went mental because it was such oh a big God. milestone and so, yeah it was just great it was unbelievable i think it's like i kept on saying to people because everyone is so intrigued by that time and wayflower 
um, naturally because we just grew so quickly. They're like, what, what's it like? And I was like, it's kind of like what you'd expect, like all these mad Silicon Valley, you know, growth stories to be like, that's exactly what it was like. We there's lots of fucking smart young people like r- hustlers, like everyone they hired, especially at that time, were just like massive hustlers. And there's such a good every like the culture was just great. Um, it, everyone was like work hard, play hard, and yeah, it was class. It was just it was at, deadly. At, at that time, you just kind of touched on the American team. It was the American team that had that kind of Silicon Valley vibe to it, but it was all based in Dublin, wasn't it? So it was, so there was a team, the big, the, all the team was in, in, well, sorry, majority of the team was in, in Ireland, but there was a team in Atlanta as well. So there were still people over in Atlanta. We had hired Americans over there and they, uh, but it wasn't that, it wasn't massive. Um, still like people in, in Dublin were still doing, um, I think they were doing American areas at that, um, at that stage as well. Um, but it, it was a really, fun uh, uh, LA time on the Dublin clock. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I think the lads are still doing it now. Fair play to them. Um, um, okay, but, amazing. That that sounds. Uh, it's always interesting to hear from people at uh, companies like that. I suppose that had taken off, and I suppose from our our domain, it's it's all e-commerce, and to have such an amazing Irish success story, it's uh, yeah, great to hear about how how it all kind of came to fruition. I suppose. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. So no, it's great. I love I love working in e-commerce. Like. You know, we went to that e-commerce uh, event a couple of weeks ago. What were the lads uh, e- that you guys ran? Sorry. <laughs> I was <laughs> waiting for ran that. You guys ran. And I just, <laughs> I, I just, I wanted to dip my toe back in. And it was, I just love all the, I just love the e-commerce space. Like everyone is sound. There's no bullshit. And uh, I think there's like lots of cool things happening. It's cool. like being around all the brands doing like, like doing so well and like listen to their success stories so it's when we were that's why I loved working at Wayflower because it's such a great I just e-commerce is such a great um uh space to be in yeah I, th- I think you're right as well like it's it's definitely not a very traditional corporate corporate industry just with the no. nature of Shopify and how easy it is to set up a store like you have people from literally all walks of life setting up e-commerce stores and doing really well at it as well so that lends itself i think to more of a funner environment a lot of the time um yeah i suppose you were at wayflyer for about two years and then um you've now founded glitch um so i suppose one interesting piece from our perspective and how we probably even came about meeting each other was through the through dog patch labs and the ndrc slash founders program so we kind of touched on it on an episode a couple of weeks ago but store hero was accepted into the ndrc program which is a national accelerator program kind of based out of dog patch labs um this year, I think it's the first time they've run it, Ash, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's very first. Uh, We're the guinea pigs. It's called, it's called the, the, the Founders Programme. Do you want to just give everyone a little bit of a, an insight into what the guinea pig experience entails? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the Founders Programme was set up by Dogpatch. Um, it's kind of like the same format as, as YC. So they, it's a talent accelerator. So not people don't come with businesses. They come like with ideas. Um, and not everybody has an idea. So the people that they brought out on were, so they, we all started in September. There's a cohort of, I think it was 42 of us, maybe, or 40 of us. Um, the idea is like half of those people are technical, half are commercial. And um, in the first three months, it was all about basically finding a co-founder, coming up with an idea, validating, validating that idea. idea. And basically pitching to uh, the IC to get 100K. So um, it's I was like, it's like survival of the fittest, basically, at the start. So it was, uh, you. everyone is sound like, but you at the start, you're like, you're competing for the really good developer. Because there's a lot of really good commercial people in there. Um, and, like, and then there's, and there's developers that are, you know, some developers were really focused on what they wanted to do. But then there was a cohort of developers that were like, we just want a commercial person to like come together and like form a business. Like, so, so not all of them were like that. So there was a ha- like only a handful of them. And I met Kingsley, my co-founder on day one. And he was, uh, he was head of engineering for Web Summit. I was like, Dick, um, head of engineer, or he was a lead engineer in Google Ads. I was like, Dick, okay, great. Yeah, this is what we want. 
Um, he's like, he's not, he's not a child, you know, he's in his thirties as well as a tick. Okay. Like he's, he's, he's definitely on my list. And I basically had like an idea of who, what the kind of person I wanted um, to partner, like who the person I want to partner with. Like I had a kind of a list of their attributes. Like, are they around the same age? Like, are they a complete nerd? You know, would I trust them to to do a business, uh, to like set up a business with? And there's not very many people that you, you would like be able to do that with. And we got on 100%. literally from the first day and uh, we started, so they brought us on in, in, was it actually at the end of August we had two weeks off before we actually started the uh, the actual program but within those two weeks me and Kingsley started working together we were in dog patch coming up with ideas chatting and it was when we were chatting about I was talking about Wayflower and marketing data and how important it is and me seeing at some businesses that because in Wayflower everything has to be on an upward trajectory for you to get funding so even if you're doing like a couple of million in revenues but you're you know your meta is on a downward trajectory it's too high risk for them to invest in you but at least when I was there they it, you 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 couldn't you couldn't get you couldn't get um investment because there's no securities obviously and when Casey was telling me like you know Google ads is predominantly built for large advertising budgets um and people kind of like the the the, the interface is quite complex and you what, kind of need, you know, what, 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 just in terms of context from somebody who's actually worked at Google and worked at Wayfair, what, what do you consider large in terms of a Google oh, ads budget? Oh, and like, I'm, he's going to kill me next. I'm going to get this wrong. It's like large budgets are like, you know, like a couple of hundred grand a day. That's, that's the kind of budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you're looking at booking.com. So I think they spend like 38 billion a year on Google or something like that. That's Brilliant. like their, yeah, something yeah, yeah. wild like that. Um, so they're their I think that's their best customer. So if you're if you're trying to solve, you know, build for someone spending thirty eight billion, it's very difficult to build for someone who has even like a couple of hundred or a couple of grand a day, um, or even ten grand a day. Like they're very different offerings. So the the the, the technology right now is like optimized to like bigger budgets, and naturally it is like that's where they're getting most of their revenues. So, um, off the back of that. There's a real like the, the the interface that they have is quite complex, and I was talking to a guy I'll never forget it. He was like he's setting up his own SaaS business. He just raised money, um, knew, like had a product market fit. A handful of customers wanted to scale, and he I was asking him, you know, what are you going to do? Like, how are you going to go about scaling, and how are you going to choose which platform, etc. And he said uh, he spent twenty hours doing a Google Ads tutorial to try and understand how to how to create an ad really effectively. I was like, fucking hell, 20 hours, what a waste of your time. Um, so all of those conversations and led us down the path to creating the ad. And I'm not really talking about the Founders Programme, so I should, should. So going back to the Founders Programme, we met each other, um, survival of the fittest. Um, you, they force you into testing the product, the, like testing out a couple of different people. So I think it was like three how, different. How, how does that work? It's almost like forced matchmaking or Tinder to a yeah. certain extent. They, they were like, they were like, um, so go out and, and like you have to form relationships. Like you, can, we're not going to do it for you because that's really unnatural. So they, but they said like you have to have three people that you've worked with. So I worked with um Kieran, and who else did I work with? I can't even remember. But I remember Kieran. I was like, love Kieran as well. One of the other guys. I was like, it's either Kingsley or Kieran. And um, and then in the second week, we had to decide who we wanted to work with. And so right. uh, we did. And the four four weeks. Weeks. Yeah, I think it was after one week. Yeah, they were like, yeah, it was really quick. And then the idea was that you would do sprints. So you'd work right. together. And at the end of the sprint, you'd decide if you wanted to stay together or break up. So then, and they're going to fucking kill me for saying this, but uh, <laughs> like we, were, we were like, this is Love Island for business. <laughs> um, because you were like, you were, they, like, you made breaking up like quite like natural and uh, people celebrated it because the breaking up and not staying in a bad team is actually a good thing. So we had a Slack channel yeah. and everyone like typed in be like, we're now single if anyone's available. Um, and that like, you know, but me, so after the first week, I'd worked with a couple of the guys and it was the Rugby World Cup was on and I was going to Paris to the South Africa game. And I was like kind of stressing. I was like, shit, like, does Kingsley like me? Because I really like him. Don't really know what to do. 
And then he rang, rings me just as I was getting on the plane, and he was like, "Are we? Will we? Will we? Will we? Um, co- like work, work together?" And I was like, "Yes, unbelievable! I had a great weekend." Then for nice. Ireland bets, I <laughs> <laughs> forgot. Went out on the session that that for the whole night was great crack, and um, and then uh, but then we stayed together and worked all the way through, and we never broke up or anything. But people were breaking up and getting together, um, but at the end, in and we like we we were really further a lot we were further along than a lot of people just because we had been together for the longest and we actually started building the platform in after probably in around late october right. and we had yeah so it took her in six weeks to get it that mvp which is cool and so at the end so we we all built it out um people were breaking up staying together and at the end i think there was 15 teams and they all pitch for IC, um, so for the hundred k, and um, you pitch to, like Heather, I think it was Maria McMenamin, I pitched to as well, and John Bradford, and yeah, and you just kind of talked through your idea and kind of your your hopes for the idea, and then so um, four, four, was it forty two people in at the start, fifteen teams, yeah. and then yeah. how many how many hundred k's was there, or was it defined? 800k sorry I should have said that yeah so there was eight, eight. there was eight yeah and I was like freaking out I was like what if we don't get the money like what are we going to do and but I knew kind of in the back of my head like you know what we've been doing or the the traction that we've got and kind of the stage that we're at it it was we were in a good place I wasn't cocky to say like you know we're definitely going to get it because you never know um never know. but you never know so um but we were we had done like all the th- all the right things and the program like throughout the first three months like we did lots of sessions you know they uh, talk having really difficult conversations which is really important as um as uh co-founders to be able to like have those discussions and like kind of figure out how do you guys handle disputes because you're always inevitably going to like, disagree on things so that was really really good because we disputed like we're very different people I'm an he's an engineer I'm a commercial person and I think that has like set us up for success like by having those really early on and now we know how to mm-hmm. like argue essentially and come up with resolutions very quickly um and then they had sessions with like right. how to come up with ideas of validating your ideas knowing what a good idea is like all of those kind of things to like enable us to build kind of good businesses so there's a good format in place because I know people who've ra- who've been on accelerators and they've being kind of brought down this like garden path that's not that's actually not that relevant and they're just being forced into you know being on this like venture backed wheel um yeah. where it's not right for your business um but that this, this is not like that although the the idea is to build unicorns out, out of the back of off the back of this so inevitably they want big businesses that will be venture backed that will do re- that will <clears> be successful um but it, but they're not like yeah, sorry, go on. Um, it, it's amazing though that the, I just think that what they're doing there really, like the NDRC program, like I know from myself and Carl's perspective, we would have had high expectations of what it was going to be and what it wasn't going to be going in. I mean, it's been incredible, like so much amazing coaching, so much just unbelievable networking, the intros they've been able to make. It's been a huge, oh, unreal. huge, huge crew for us. And obviously the Founders program is very, very similar in, in a lot of ways. Yeah. It's amazing that this even goes on in Dublin. It's such an amazing uh, program to have running in, in a city like Dublin, you know? So oh, lucky. Yeah, we're so lucky to have it. And that's what it is. It's or oh, If you don't get, like, if you don't build a business from it, you know, from what we're doing anyway, the network that you will get from even being par- participating and being in the community is insane. Um, mm. We're lucky to, be, like, to have a business off the back of it. And the second part of the program is all about getting investor, like building, getting an MVP, getting ready for um, investors. So we're we're both doing the demo day in eleventh of in the eleventh of April, and yeah. it's it's like talking to investors, building out your pitch. You know, this is all very new for me, um, and I don't and like trying to frame the pitch so it's like really impactful and actually you know sends the message home. I think if I didn't have that, I, I don't know where I'd kind of be, to be honest. I'd probably be somewhere, but I don't know if I'd be as as advanced as where I am today. 
I think this, you know, starting off a startup, there's so many cracks that you can fall into, but I think that the, the program is set up in a way where they just try and get you away from those cracks where possible. There's so many little things and so much amazing coaching that I just can't, um, can't stress how, how great it's been for us. And it sounds like it's a very, very similar experience yeah. for yourself. Yeah. In terms of, I suppose, going into the program, did like you kind of mentioned you were in Dogpatch and you were kind of messing around with some ideas, you from Wayflyer, Kingsley from mm. Google. Had either of you had a, an inclination as to what Glitch was going to look like going into the program or did it completely originate, we'd say, while you were there? Um, so Kingsley actually really wanted to do like AI for images. He was like, okay. oh, I wanted to create, he wanted to create like a, a tool to make images um, through AI, um, which is like, uh, well, you know, that what is a uh, AI? What is the cool creative, creative AI? Adverb, like Dali or one of those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, then we started talking about um the actual like what my experience with with um with businesses not being really able to properly access like things and like not just customers but potentially funding. And we were both saying, Jesus, like this is actually more of an interesting idea. Um, and it's more of like a full suite of or like a more of a it's less of a feature of a product. It's more of a product. So it um. The idea, the, the 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 kind of concept of like doing something in this space was there already from Kingsley's side, but the, the way the product is today was definitely from both of us, and mainly actually, like the program forced us to talk to customers, and I scoured the internet to meet as many like consultants, agencies, SMEs as possible, and um, so I think we talked to like a hundred and fifty between september and october it was just i was on the call i actually told carl at one point <laughs> it must um, be a fun google calendar to look at <laughs> yeah it was jesus it was painful but it was good and then from the, off the back of those conversations that's where the idea came from and then we started actually running ads manually for businesses just to understand like what are the actual what's the process someone goes to to create it get on Google, create an ad and have it working really effectively. And then that enabled us to actually build the technology. So it's not a black box. We initially thought that someone would want you to, you know, just create everything. It would just work in the background, but people want an element of control. So if we didn't, if we didn't talk to people and if we didn't do ads manually for people and had customers really, or users really early on, we wouldn't have known that. Um. So yeah, it's a mixture of, it was a conceptual idea it kind of evolved after you know chatting to people basically to find out what the real problem was and it will evolve again like i'll well, you know we'll talk in a year's time and i'll be like oh yeah we're i don't know what we'll be doing but it will be definitely we'll be solving a similar problem but maybe just in a slightly different way 100 percent. We, we would have seen that i mean even i would have sent um Send a video to a customer probably this time last year and even the product and what we were kind of the way we were framing it and so, so on and so forth might have been a lot different to how we kind of frame it today and definitely our, our focus on profitability has has you know definitely come to fruition comes to the fore i suppose an awful lot more now than maybe 12 18 months ago yeah. at this at this point so uh, you're, you're right the goalpost will always be kind of changing slightly but as long as you're still trying to i suppose still solve the same kind of core problem um yeah that's all that really matters in yeah. terms of like, I suppose, what you're trying to replace is it, you're trying to replace agencies. Like if you're putting all of the ads and like if I think of an e-commerce business anyway, yeah. I know e-commerce isn't your your primary ICP right now. Um, You know, who runs their ads? Usually it's an external agency. But if, if a tool yeah. like Glitch can come in and actually put those ads in autopilot, is there a need for that agency or how do you kind of think about that? So agencies will always exist because people there's like people will always want to like there's certain people that will want to outsource work like ads marketing and they will always do that but then there's people that want to keep it in-house and we're replacing we're probably replacing the the like consultant or the agency that's that's working with those people right now who 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 they are forced to outsource it because they don't have any other option um but we, i don't think we'll ever replace agencies to be honest i think we're agencies also the more the because the way agencies work it's obviously they take predominantly they're taking a percentage of you know perf, like the revenue or the performance it works on that kind of model um so they want people to be spending big budgets making big returns so we're actually fo and like you know we're still focused on people like they might do, be doing a couple of grand a month 
or they could like we're talking to people who are doing 30 or 40 grand a month as well but the, the on the smaller end of it agencies don't want to work with them either because it's not it's not that interesting for them um so i don't know if i answered your question there but um, no absolutely no sorry helping kind of businesses want to maybe bring it in house i suppose like longer term it could be a play for agencies to almost become a little bit more efficient in their day-to-day operations by actually using the tool and actually you know the the it isn't the sole function of agencies typically to an e-commerce brand isn't just kind of paid media or media buying to a certain extent there's a lot of kind of mm-hmm. consultative elements that go along with it yeah. so like if you're an agency could you use a tool essentially to not just re- like it's definitely not a replacement but to just make you more efficient and give more time to i suppose talk have improved the client's client agency relationship i suppose to a greater yeah. extent absolutely so um i'm definitely on like my fundraising like way of thinking because i'm like don't confuse the message don't confuse the message so right now <laughs> right now we're like solely focused on solving like the the problem of someone using like make it super simple for anyone regardless it's all like there's no assumed knowledge with we want we don't want any assumed knowledge with our tool um so if we solve for that make it really easy like create really effective um growth campaigns that perform well and that are being maintained by the AI that people can just like run in the background. Like if we solve for that, absolutely agencies will be interested in using our our system. But we need to solve for that first. So mm. our idea, like we we serve the the client directly, and I ha- we are talking to agencies at the moment. They are like feeding back, testing, sending us features right. that they would like off the back of it. And agencies are all looking to, looking at how they can optimize and automate their work. Like everyone okay. is using uh, or ChatGPT. Like I was talking to a, a founder or like a business owner, and they're like our agency is great you know um which is you know that's brilliant that they work with a great agency they're like they're not using um chat gbt i was like they're 100 percent using chat gbt like, <laughs> like i was like I, I said to them i was like they're they're if they're a great agency that's brilliant and they're obviously doing some great work for you guys but like don't be fooled like people everyone is using chat gbt do you know what i mean everyone is streamlining and automating how they're working to make to do things more efficiently and like our tool it allows that it just makes things more efficient so and it's like this you know, bullshit term you know like allow the people to do more impactful work um that like and, and remove any of this kind of like admin kind of like admin work and op, like operational work that could be done by by a tool um uh and i don't know where i was going with that we can maybe remove that it, it, it is interesting work. like i think there is you kind of touched on an interesting point that like, there is a bit of a I don't know what the word is. Is it a fear or a hesitancy to actually admit that you're using ChatGPT? I mean, one of the agency owners that was at the event that you were speaking about there um, in Dublin that we ran a couple of weeks ago yeah. was chatting about that, you know, and he ran, he ran, there was an email marketing agency and they would have ran like, you know, human generated copy alongside AI generated copy, yeah. like pretty substantive tests. And for, I know the agency in question, quite big stores. And the AI outperformed the human copy, like I think nine times out of 10. And obviously it was much quicker. There wasn't, um, you know, there wasn't as much talk gone into it, not as much talk gone into it, but it didn't take as, as long to create. You can iterate a lot quicker, yeah. run way more A-B tests a lot quicker. I don't, I don't really get the hesitancy or it's, it's, like it's, it's like it's a bad word to say that you're actually using it. If the tools yeah. are out there and it can make it more efficient, why would you not double down and actually explore them a little bit more? Yeah, 100. And I was talking to the same guy and he was like, Jesus, this is a great tool when you start to use, you know, when you're fully multi-platform, like, come, come, come to me. Because right now, like to be to serve, obviously, e-commerce, e-commerce. you need to serve like Meta in particular and then Snap and TikTok and all those things. But anyway, it's like they, he's he is um like a, like forward thinking as an agency owner um, yeah. and the way he's like A-B testing it and like qualifying basically is is a really good way to do it. And I think there is and there's more agency owners out there like like him now. I have a, a good mm-hmm. mate of mine who runs a really good performance agency for e com in the UK, um, a gas man, and he he was saying to me the same thing. He was like, if I can use if I can use um optimization to like streamline my work and pr- do be- get better outputs for my customers, like why like that it's it's a win win. Like why wouldn't I do it? But yeah. um yeah i don't know it like it is ai is like a in the investment world it's like i want to give you all the money in the world here you are ai unreal in the like day-to-day world people are fucking terrified of it they're like yeah. scared to admit that it's good 
Big time, big time. So I suppose where where are you now? So you you you've gone through the founders program coming up to demo day. I think next week. Um, you have sixty people using the platform. Yeah, so we have a hundred and I'd say there's about one hundred and fifty people, maybe one hundred and sixty people on our waiting list. I've converted wow. about sixty of yeah. So that was me just scaring the internet for the last few months. Um, and and like so, I've converted about sixty of those to using the platform since January. And they, and in the last three weeks, and when I say using the platform, they were like just feeding back in the UI. And now in the last two weeks, we have like a self-serve platform. So I've gotten more and more businesses to to use it. So Serve, um, the new Irish kind of like it's golden child. It's going to be an unbelievable company. They're using it for us. Like um, the shop, the Wayflower guys are testing it for us as well. I was saying Shop Circle and stuff. Skills Trust is another one. Like I think like we're seeing like a really good, um, a really good use case for us is these high growth um, kind of B2B SaaS businesses that have money to deploy, but they just don't have the ability to do it in, in, in house right now. Um, so it's getting more of those guys involved um, testing the platform. Um, and in the co- next couple of months, we hope to have like the full like version one of the product um, secure a bit of capital. So we're raising 500K at the moment, um, predominantly from angels. And that will allow us to like scale the team. And we're going to start once we have the team in place. Um, we're we've been scoping out how to move multi, how to move into like multi platforms, and we can just activate that. So, um, like there's lots of exciting things happening, but like I'm also trying to like you know, you know, take take one step at a time as well, and um, and and create a really good first version that you know creates ads for people. It monitors those ads, make them makes them high perform, or can make sure that they're high performing, and that like reduces the time massively for people to to manage them, which we 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 solve for right now. It takes literally a couple of minutes to create an ad and and manage it. Um. So yeah, that's where we're I kind even, of. I even know from like I, I was in I was at Shopify for a number of years, but I was spent the first year and a half um in support, and like so many of the questions would be people like at their wits end trying to set up a Google ad. Um, yeah. So I, I, I've seen the problem a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, it seems straightforward, but in a lot of cases, for a lot of people, it's not straightforward. It's not it's not easy. So if you can have a tool that you can simply is it just put in the URL and it will create the app yeah. quickly. Yeah, you put like, in the URL. We have we've uh, we asked you a couple of questions. The AI builds out your ad for you can edit it um, and it pushes it live on you into your Google Ad Manager live um, for you. And and basically a monitor, so it sends it, the AI monitors the ad. So if the ad starts to dip in performance, because someone might just create one ad like sure. every so often, um, but it's about maintaining their ad. So that's where this kind of comes to life. I think the the, the ad is being monitored. The tool tells you, the platform tells you, hey, you need to update this, this, and this. Do you want to do it? And you can action it straight away, as opposed to having to go in and research to figure out why the the ad has started to stop perform, why the ad has stopped performing. Um. Uh. So that that's the real USP is like the it's like removing the time the time requirement to do this, and then we want to use the AI in a really smart way to just tell people like what good looks like, you know, hey, you've created an ad way two weeks because. It takes about two weeks for it to actually be impactful. Like, give them small pieces of information that like makes them feel confident about what they're doing because that's what I'm seeing. There's just a lot of people who are, um, they go off, they'll create ads, but then they're like, okay, I don't know what's happening now. Like, like well, I don't know what we, it looks like. We see that all the time as well. It, it's we're actually solving like a similar problem in a very very different way, but we we see we yeah. have that conversation on a daily basis with users as well. So, um, yeah, yeah completely get it um so okay you're, you're looking to try and raise funding over the next couple of months as well i suppose with your own background from delio the welsh version of ei even the Wayflyer in a very much mm-hmm. a fintech background uh, i'm sure that's quite the journey at the moment <laughs> yeah it's interesting um so i have some because i've dealt with a lot of funds and angel networks and i have especially in the uk so i have good connections there and i've been reaching out to them being like hey lads i'm actually now raising some money can you help me um and people have been great um uh, and and like uh like the guys at wayflower have been really great you know there's actually a great community there of like even people that work there still like um uh dear mccarthy has been great to me and uh and that and people who 
who have left and like lots lots of people have gone out on their own and we're there's like kind of a crew of us that are helping each other out and it's like getting getting like helping each other get in front of like customers depending on what they do or you know meet angels um so like and then the network here has been exceptional so heather morris who runs the the founders program and jane dillon um who's the director they've just been unreal and then patrick as well has has been great so it's i'm just out here i keep on saying to you to people i'm just out here raising some money so like anyone you want to introduce me to like send them my way i'll talk to anyone because it's good to just build out a network of people and there's some like the the investment space and you know in ireland is great um it's actually mm. becoming so like a lot better than it was there's like lots of great oh, things okay. happening like great great funds like frontline and elkstone and sure valley ventures and stuff and then like ei is doing great stuff as well like that donica is doing amazing stuff um but then in the uk it's like a whole different kettle of fish um it's a huge pond far more sophisticated um i've partnered with a really good female kind of led like they're focused on female led businesses c ventures and they've just been brilliant as well introducing me to people so when you're out here fundraising it's all about networking really and i'll talk to the wall so it helps <laughs> <laughs> it definitely helps it definitely helps yeah um perfect Ash. if if anyone is looking to get in contact with you or know more about glitch where where can they hear from you yeah, so it's we're at glitchads.ai or give me a shout at Ashling um at glitchads.ai. Um happy, as I said, like really keen to chat to any businesses that want to test the platform, absolutely come our way. Um who wanna who wanna streamline their ads. And yeah, if you're if you're out there looking to invest in some a potential uh you know new Irish unicorn here it comes to me as well. It's guaranteed. <laughs> yeah, it's, gar- it's guaranteed. It's guaranteed. Someone will kill me. Be more direct. Tell them what you're going to you're going to be what. <laughs> brilliant, yeah. brilliant. Listen, Ash, we'll leave it there. So thanks very much for coming on and we'll chat to you again very soon. Yeah, cheers. Thanks a million. See ya. Bye bye.